early finish from work means one thing for me. <laughs> Grab the floater kit and go and have some fun off the top. I've got my floater pack. Flicked a few mixers, found them straight away in the corner to be fair. Nothing massive so far, but I think this is like the third fish in 10 minutes. Great fun. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully catch a few more fish. That's a little bit of a bigger one. So, bonus. In we go. There we go. Bit of a character. Gnarly old one out the edge, but I'll show you the little tip that I was doing because I've got seagull issues. There's a little way I get round those, or try to get round them, is just with the feeding. So I feed two lines, one out in the lake where the seagulls are probably used to picking up people's biscuits and pellets, but one, a little sneaky one down the side as well, so the, the fish can gain a little bit more confidence. And this is this is where this one came from. Just literally flicked a few biscuits, almost like we are on a match fishery, so the, these fish come in the margins and normally you get the bigger fish down the side as well. And uh, it proved the case with this one. I'm gonna get him back because he's full of life. But yeah, off to a good start. Right, the seagulls don't seem to be bothering us too much at the minute. But earlier, every time I put any biscuits in, they were just on it. I couldn't get anything going because they were just straight on the biscuit. So what? What they normally do is, like I'm feeding in front of me like everyone else would, and they come down and steal all those biscuits. But I've got a crafty little line that normally produces a bigger fish, and the seagulls don't bother with it so much, so I'll, I'll keep them feeding out there, so the seagulls are hitting all my biscuits, and then I'll just put a sneaky little pouch just down the margin, almost as if you were match fishing. It is a match fish, really. The fish are used to coming right up the inside. And those just sit there and you can sort of be fishing away on your mate. Like I've got, I haven't got seagull issues, but I've got duck issues now. Um, the fish are still feeding amongst them, but like a bigger fish can sort of gain its confidence down the margin without any sort of aggravation from the bird life. And uh, yeah, it's just a good little tip to sort of, it splits the ducks up and the gulls up and gets the big fish confident. So it, it's, pay, it's paid dividends for me in the past. And it's not just a match water sort of tactic. I've done it for sort of bigger fish on the end of a drift. So say if the fish are cautious out in the, in, in the main lake and you've seen you, what, what mixes are left have drifted up to the inside, um, they're much softer. They're mu they're, the, the fish are more readily to take them. Like the, they're easier to eat. They almost think they're safer because if you had that biscuit on the hook, it would have fell off by now. Like it's, it's gone soft. It's took all the water on. So they sometimes follow them right up the margins and they, they, they almost think they've been left alone. So if you feed there and then you get one confident, you can come off your main line, flick one down to the inside and he, he's, he's had a free feed for sort of an hour plus and, and they're much more easy to catch when they've, they've had a few biscuits. So yeah, great little tip on feeding that is. You might have noticed my float again. <laughs> it's a, actually a little bit of wax. Just because I'm not fishing very far out, the fish just don't spook off it. Like I'm getting them feeding, and as long as you feather it and it doesn't plop in really loud, they almost come to it. I've had more fish, I think, come and have a look at me wax than I have my biscuit so far. But yeah, another fish. It's good fun, this. I thought momentarily I ducked one of the ghosties, but uh, then I saw him feeding down the inside, so it wasn't him, so he's still out there. Hopefully we'll have him in a bit. So I'll get this one back, try and catch some more, then I'll run you through some rig tips, I think. Some uh, little, little sneaky bits that I try and do. Right then, I'm going to run you through my rigs and um, bait preparation. There's two of my main rigs. Um, 
So I'll start on this one. This is what I'll do. You can fish this with a normal hook length or I have this sneaky little one. So I've got my two little blobs there and that's actually a sinking pellet. It's just trimmed down and nice size 12. Um, and that's for fish when they're sort of being a little bit spooky. It's good for early session fishing as well. So when you can see fish cruising around and they're being a little bit moody, even on these commercial waters, they're coming and nudging the biscuits. And because that's just a little bit lower, that's, it's almost safer for them to grab. So that's a good, good session starter. Or if they go a little bit wonky when you've caught a few. When I'm fishing a little bit further out, I always fish the surface bombs, the quorum surface bomb. They, they do two things. They're really good because they, they've got like a low profile, they cast like bullets. So you can fish it at extreme range, say if you're spawning mixers. Um, this is actually the smaller one, there, there is a larger version. And you can fish up to sort of, I've fished up to 80 yards, possibly further with these. And they do two things. I like the, the khaki colour when I'm fishing at distance. Because you can't, you can't really see your hook bait. So you're waiting for that to do the business. So I'll fish a shorter hook link with it being a khaki one and act it as a, as a bolt rig basically, like as it's drifting through on a tighter line, the fish come up, feel the resistance and you'll see a big swirl. You don't want to be striking all the time. Every time like a fish comes up and you think it's mouthing your biscuit, wait for that big swirl and you'll see your line just snaking across the water. The fish is on, it's, it's done the work for you. It's just hooked itself. So I fish that one. That's my sort of distance rig. And a fish, like I say, fish that either with a with a normal hook link with one on the top, or it's almost like a little surface mug, mugging rig. And I couple that again. I'm, I'm all the time. I'm sort of fishing ten pound main line. I, I, I normally go on sort of diameter, so anywhere between 026 and 028 for surface fishing. That covers me from my commercial fishing, or like if I go onto a, a harder venue and try and catch them off the top. It's ample because you're fishing light hook links anyway. So I'm, I'm dropping down hook link wise to sort of 020. Little bit lighter here because you can get away with it. Smaller fish, bigger fish. I'll probably feed the swim for longer, get the, get the confidence up and fish a little bit heavier, sort of 022, 023. Again, I don't, I don't think you need massive hooks like a, a, I'm using size 12 all rounder. I've, I've had no issues with hook pulls. And then when I do fish places like this, I end up fishing this rig more than anything because there's no massive chucks on commercial fisheries. Um, this is the rig that I'll plop up the inside as well. I, I touched on earlier, feeding that margin, getting away from the birds. Um, it's, it's basically a little bit of baby bell wax as my controller. It's really, really not complicated at all. It, I just mould that. I've, so that's my hook link. And that's five, five and a half foot. It's basically a little bit short of a wingspan, and that just moulds around my nut where I join the hook link on. It's um, it's soft, really pliable at first, and then because it's wax, you pop it in the water, it cools down, and it like solidifies around the nut. It's great for just plopping in front of fish. You can plop that in amongst them, and they're not scared at all. In fact, the opposite, they come and try and eat it. Um, so that's a great little tip, great little rig. And all I've done on that one is I've got one of our little pop-up hook baits that come in the floater pack and I've trimmed it down. I've took like a quarter of it and I've just super glued a little biscuit on the back end of it so it looks really natural. It sits in the water, you've got your little hook, you've got your half an oozing pellet for sort of a visual aid for me and then underneath is the little bit of biscuit that sort of, so as the fish comes up it just look, it looks exactly the same as what they're eating. So that's a massive little help. That's great for fishing at shorter range. Because sometimes, we found today, I've tried to feed the fish closer so I could pick out the bigger fish. And the closer they've got, the more spooky they've been. They've like nudged the biscuit. They haven't, they've stopped that pack manning. And soon as I've fed further, they're, they're confident again. I'll flick further and I've had one straight away. So yeah, they're, they're my go-to sort of surface rigs. Nothing complicated. Just really simple balanced tackle.
Right then, I'm gonna run you through how I prepare my bait as well. Like right, these, these, these dog, that dog biscuits, floating pellets. They're brilliant out the out the bag, yeah, out the out the bucket, I should say. There's a few little tips that I put in, or little edges that I think make them that little bit better. Um, whether it's because I'm one of the few that are doing it, or the oil definitely helps on a windy day because it will it will give you a much bigger flatter area. Like we're lucky here today. There's no wind, um, so you can. You, you, it's really visual. You can see your hook bait most of the time, um, but with the oil, it, it forms like a big flat spot. So if you're on a big, say, a reservoir um, for like a lower stock of fish, this stuff is really important because it it, it it forms like a big slick, and the fish come. Not only does it taste good, but it, it enables sort of the fish to catch the biscuits easier because they're not chasing it in the ripple. Um, so that's a massive edge, and then. Like I said, I've touched on it, it tastes really good to them. But another attraction edge is to actually, when I coat them all in oil, I just give them a dust in the ground bait. So you've got sort of two elements of attraction. You've got the oil, which flattens the surface off. So the surface tastes good. And then the ground bait, it takes on the oil and it sort of, they'll disperse off the biscuit. And then you get like, a, or in, in my mind, you have like a slow leak of ground bait coming through the water as well. So if they're not quite coming up on the top, it sort of, it aids drawing them up. And once once they start eating the biscuits, that's that's it then, they're, they're there, job's done. And then, uh, then I'm just gonna try and catch them. So I'm just gonna show you how I prepare it. So I'll get there, this is the absolute fish oil. And I'll just go, I'm just dousing the pad, give them a proper good coating. And then this is the liquid enhancer, hemp and halibut. Just a winner everywhere, halibut. They love it, hemp, love it. And I'm just gonna coat them up first. I'm gonna try not to be too noisy because there's other people fishing. So those, you see those are nicely coated. They've, got, they've all got like a really nice coating on them. So I'll just get the Scopex because that it smells. It is literally, it smells good enough to eat that. So, a good couple of handfuls on those. While they're still wet, again, lid back on. And as you can see, just let that oil, oh, spilt some. I can actually put a little bit more on there. So I want them to have like their own indiv individual coating. So that's slightly better. So as you can see those, not only are they oily, they've got their own ground bait coating. So as they go in the water, you can almost see the oil like coming off them. You get like that little slick and then the, that ground bait just dusting off down to the bottom. Whether it, it certainly gives me more confidence but yeah, that's a great little tip, especially for pressured fish. And just like that, as you can see, <laughs> the surface bomb does the job for you. <laughs> just a big eruption and it's fish on. This one's going a little bit crazy. I don't know what's, what's quite happened there, but hopefully it just means it's a bit of a bigger fish. I didn't see it take the up bait, it just suddenly erupted. So we'll see. But yeah, we've just uh, we've just moved out of that little little fish bay because um, it started off and we we're having a decent stamp of fish. 
but then sort of the more the more we fed the more fish that came into the bay we, like a real small stamp of fish seemed to appear um so we've just come down into the main body of the lake and we've sort of had to feed the birds off a bit but they have gone a little bit now left us alone and the, the fish have turned up but because I'm fishing slightly further out of range I'm just going around the corner I've switched to the surface bum so I don't have to watch my hook, hook bait so much because what effectively happens because there's a bit of resistance from the surface bum I've got a little quick change swivel that just pulls inside of it and as it feels the resistance and, and shoots off it hook, the fish pretty much hook themselves. It does look a little bit of a bigger fish, this one. Which explains why it's fighting much harder than the others. Salmon swoop. Yep. And definitely a little bit bigger that one. Well worth moving down here. So a quick move down the other end and we've got back in touch with that slightly bigger stamp of fish. There's a few, I've seen a few slightly bigger than this I think in amongst the shoal. So it was a quick change of tactics as well. I've gone back onto the, uh, the quorum surface bum, letting, letting them do the hard work really. I'm fishing a little bit further out, so can't quite see my hook bait. Just waiting for that big eruption and then it's fish on. So I'm just gonna run you quickly through a few of my hook baits. Um, I'm always, uh, whether it adds more fish, I don't know, but I love to <laughs> chop and change and try and play with hook baits and tweaking it. Because they, they sort of, you'll catch a couple quick and then, then they go on to something else. So I, I normally, when they're really having it and they're really pack manning, these, these come in the floater pack. So they're an oozing dumbbell and they, they smell really nice. And I, I just put one of these on all when they're having it. Like, they work a treat. You can see, like if I rub those, my fingers are already going red. They, they're like a constant leak. They are, those in themselves are a brilliant hook bait. But when they are going a little bit wonky and they're just nudging the biscuit and I want something to sit slightly lower in the water. So what I'll do is, see there, I've chopped a few up. I'll literally just cut sort of quarter of one up, trim it a little bit smaller and I'll super glue a little tiny biscuit, I've got like a, a little pot of, I think they're cat biscuits actually. And I'll just super glue one of those to the back end of one of the oozing pellets. And that just sort of sits a little bit lower in the water. It's a smaller mouthful. So when they're just coming and nudging those, those freebies, that sort of, you've still got all the attractants of sort of the oozing dumbbell and like the natural look of a biscuit underneath. As well as that, like, the biscuits that come in the floater pack in themselves are a fantastic hook bait. You don't get, the only downside is you don't get the longevity of the oozing dumbbell. So after two or three casts, they take water on and then you have to replace them. Sort of, just, it, you, you only have to band them to be fair or I'll lasso them. So it's, it's easy enough, open the band or open the lasso and just switch your hook bait. But again, it's like match the hatch. You sort of, when they've, been had on floaters quite a lot and someone's put like a bright one or an oozing something that's really blatant out with them being match the hats that's what they've got used to eating there's no sort of fear in eating those so those in themselves are a great hook bait and then you've got i've just chimbled one of those down so that's fishing on its own and then you've got your plastic hook baits if your fishery allows you sort of little artificial mixers 
again brilliant and you can add to those i my little friend the super glow make hook baits all the time just keep chopping and changing keep those fish coming So, I'm just going to run you through our, like my general approach on fishing a little bit further out. Um, one thing I have noticed is during the session, my hook link materials probably it, it's took on a little water. It's 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 up quite a few fish now. So, something that's handy is this stuff. Little tub of silicon mucilin. It's uh, it it just gives the the line its buoyancy again. It's like a like a little wax really. So just I'm just gonna coat my finger in it. Start from about four or five inches above the hook. So I'll coat my fingers and I'm just rubbing that mucilin all the way along my hook link. So then just try it in the margin and then you can see you can see your line sitting on the surface. Just the way you want it really. That's, so then you've got a nice straight line and your biscuit's staying away from your controller. What, what you don't want is, as it's drifting, and if your line starts sinking, like the two come in together, because the, cra the crafty little carp will swim between and like try and, they, they feel the line and then they just, they just mark your biscuit as like a, a dangerous one. Another one I'm going to do, I'm going to feed. So I've got my feed line, you can see where the ducks are. And the fish are waiting there ready and now I'm gonna just overcast them I'm just gonna just make sure I stay from, from the bird life and I'm just gonna draw that hook bait and the controller in amongst the feeding fish all the time just trying to keep your hook bait Oh, cheeky fish. <laughs> Got away with it, that one. Uh, all the time, trying to keep your hook bait at its maximum away from the controller. So, as soon as a fish touches it, it's like on a tight line. Aiding the bolt effect from your controller. Um, one thing, another thing you want to look out for is your drift. So, at the minute, my, my biscuits are drifting towards me so all the time I'm just checking my main line like I'm either correcting it if it's drifting sideways just like as if you were fishing a float just lift the line up and just trying to keep in direct contact between you the controller and the biscuit the straighter the line, the better the hooking potential of the rig is. I'm all the time just teasing that, teasing that, that line straight. Another one just got away with it. <laughs> they are being cute today. So just mending that line. And that's fish on. Big eruption. <laughs> And the floats and its job. I think it's the biggest fish, but We finally got one of the little carroty ones. Not that big one that we could see in the first swim though. And we got a goosty. Well, 
nearly. Get in that net, go on. Super. Right then, <laughs> we've finally got ourselves a ghosty. He's, uh, he's not the big one that's been, well, been mugging me off all day, but uh, nice to get one. Right then, a better one to finish on. You, you can see the clouds behind me. It looks like it's gonna absolutely chuck it down in a minute. Oh me, these things are so large though. Whether it's because they've just spawned, but he's definitely the best one of the day so far. Great fun, a few hours after work. If you've liked the video, just subscribe, have a, have a like and subscribe, and hopefully see you on the bank at some point.